Hello everyone, today I would like to come back on the um, second half of the 13th century uh, knights uh, armament in, in Western Europe and more specifically discussing the, um, let's say, the, the birth, uh, although it, it's a very improper term, of the so-called um, coat of plates or plate armor in general um, <coughs> which is a phenomenon that in Western Europe is um, mm, traceable with with a with a certain degree of uh, reliability during, in fact, uh, the second half of the 13th century, and that has um, um, created actually a lot of of discussion of why uh, it began to appear. Especially today, we will see. Um, especially from where, because this is also mm, been a matter of discussion, I'd say it immediately, um, the first um, <coughs> um, witness of, uh, of plate armor um, seems to, to, to have originated from Germany and eventually having um, uh, been exported uh, into other um, European areas, chiefly Italy, in the in the same roughly in the same period, but eventually uh, to to the, well to the rest of, of of Western Europe and even beyond, because eventually coat of plates um, uh, uh, were widespread all over all over Europe and also other places. Uh, obviously, <coughs> in relatively to the latter, having expanded from you know. From from other centers, from other, no, Germany wasn't the cradle of plate armor, historically speaking, from on a global scale. But relatively to Western Europe, especially, um, this seems to have uh, originated there. Today, I would like to discuss this um, it, for for what mm, it is really my opinion uh, on the subject matter, um, because uh, I think that there is um, <coughs> an approach that should be a bit really mentioned, at least methodologically speaking, because I have n really nothing to say about, um, you know, I, I don't want to prove that the code of plates originated somewhere else, or that, um, uh, I don't know, I'm, uh, I want to reverse uh, the main uh, hypothesis that exists on the base of uh, historical evidence, but I think that there are certain um, aspects that have to be taken into consideration more seriously on, generally speaking, uh, relatively to military technology and how um, <coughs> certain mm, improvements in, 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 in weapons and armor actually occurred, especially looking at the reasons, because there is an attitude that is um, very widespread, especially um, um, in, in, in scarcity of evidence, uh, for which um, since we know a very few, uh, like uh, about uh, take ancient history or also medieval history, especially previously to the 13th and the 14th century, we have a very few um, <coughs> understanding and knowledge, especially about what were the major, um, um, you know, the dynamics of evolution of and transformation of uh, the, uh, the medieval military uh, at the time. So, <coughs> some people tend to say, oh, since we have found an, if, um, we have found a, an evidence in here, um, <coughs> that is uh, because uh, that um, the, the thing originated in there, or at least it, it's in there that the major thing occurred. Actually, um, and this is really meta-spatial, in the sense that now I, I'm not criticizing that the f that mm, coat of plate was originated in Germany. Um, I'm, I'm simply thinking that um, th th there have been hypotheses that have probably overthought over why exactly Germany compared to another place. But we will get into detail um <coughs> uh, later. For now I would like to introduce first of all our background picture. This is a beautiful um, statue that is um, that you can find in the uh, Cathedral of Magdeburg, um, <coughs> which is a beautiful place on the Elbe River into Germany. I, I, I was lucky enough to, to go there in vacations once, although I didn't stay long in Magdeburg, but I had to visit the cathedral, not just for this beautiful statue of St. Morris, and that is very important relatively to to um, code of plates because here it's one of the first evidence that we have about code of plates. 
Um, <clears throat> but also and especially for the tomb of Otto the First, it, it's first of all a huge cathedral. Uh, the city has a lot of history, but we can't discuss about that. Maybe I, I will talk about <laughs> Magdeburg at some point. And this is really the um, at, at least the iconographically speaking, uh, one of the best examples of uh, what coat of plates looked like at the time. We are in the second half of the 13th century, so at a, a very early age in the, um, for what we know, at the stage of development of coat of plates into, uh, into Western Europe. Um, <coughs> so relatively to this, um, th th there is evidence also in sculptures in the um, relatively to the coat of plates in the Constan uh, Constance uh, Cathedral, um, so still into the Germanic area, although in, in the southwest, while Magdeburg is really in the northeast of Germany, what it was at the time, this more or less frontier area. Actually, Germany uh, at the time was still frontier in itself. Germany has always had, differently from other countries in Europe like England, France and Italy, that have always had a sort of geographical connotation, perhaps just France in the eastern part, not so much. Well, Germany was this very tumultuous uh, area, um, always in contact, in dialogue with the chiefly the Slavs, but also with the Magyars, with the, with the Hungarians, as they had uh, turned out, actually, uh <coughs> by this time, but also with a broader East that essentially at this time in the 13th century was a, was a pretty uh, agitated uh, region of Europe, especially because of the Mongolian um, of the Mongol invasions. Um, so w this figure is essentially wearing a uh, coat of blades, as we have said, uh, which is made up of um, surcoat lined with iron um, l uh, lamine, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and in this sense, it's been um, you know mm, compared to sort of. Uh, uh, to the uh, precursor of, of the 14th century brigandine, although um, conceptually, I think at this time, you know, the brigandine is really a perfection and an, an evolution that was already meeting certain uh, requirements uh, that for for how warfare had been and society, generally speaking, had begun to develop during the 14th century proper. Um, this is more the nails um, and and how coat of plates was really conceived was simply a um, um, initially at least a sort of um, a rudimentary addition to the uh, canonic uh, coat of mail that was the standard armor, we can say, from, from the times of the Iron Age to uh, up to the 17th century, at least in certain areas of Europe, especially in the East, um, <coughs> and that in that sense had dominated the scene. Um, we will explain later why this occurred. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the Magdeburg sculpture um, is um, is, show is showing this sort of poncho-like uh, construction, as Jan Heath defines it, um <coughs> to which the sides um, extend from the front and are wrapped around and secu secured by buckles mm, uh, to um, down to the middle of the back. Um, and, and, and in this sense, the statue of Magdeburg here it's uh, being photographed by from the behind. Actually, if you go around the statue, I obviously <laughs> went first of all photographing this this statue on my own. I think I have the photos I might have published uh, in this video, but uh, I went around and you can't see the statue from the back because it's uh, facing the. Um, I mean, the back is facing the, the wall, so I couldn't really see it well, but this picture is, is amazing. Um, there are also lots of details relatively to armor. Um, here you can see a beautiful coif, um, or coif, I don't know how, how you say that. The sword is cupboard, is very interesting. Also, the uh, the sword coat in itself, it's very, uh, it's really very, um, I mean, uh, aside from the coat of mail, uh, the coat of plate, sorry, um, the, um, this knight's gear is um, pretty much uh, standard for the times. Uh, this, is, this, this, um, this statue is also interesting because it's depicting a sort of um, 
uh, you know, San Morris was um, usually depicted in Christian tradition like like a Moor, so it's essentially the um, those who made the statue were, were wanting to depict what seems um, evenly from the somatic traits as um, a black African. Um, <coughs> this is also mm, kind of a uh, it's not so rare in Christian art at the time, but it's still <coughs> a very beautiful depiction. Um, in um, um, the um, uh, the the importance of this um <coughs> this sculpture is that is uh, as we were saying before it's one of the first uh evidence of coat of mail uh, a coat of plate being being used um we say one of the many because actually it's pretty difficult to date these sculptures yes historically speaking we know that we are in the second half probably even in, in the late uh, 13th century um, but we don't know which statue uh, came first. Uh, uh, mm, I'm at least I'm no expert about this. I'm sure that there is all a very interesting bibliography and academic debate about this um <coughs> dating, l let's say. But um, we can say that there are many other um, sculptures and, and actually um, other iconographical and archaeological evidence of um, even later um, code of plates that is actually pretty um, um, pretty similar uh, to um, um, to the in construction in terms of engineering how it was built to the one we see here. Um, <coughs> so uh, here you don't actually see the plate because the plate is under the surcoat. So this was worn like just like. Uh, male, um, you see that the, the sword coat is covering, um, this has no sleeves, um, the arms are, are, are left with the male um, uh, outside, <laughs> I don't know how you say that. Um, so it's normal that you, that it's not showed, although you can here see, um, uh, I don't know if you see that from the picture I've placed in here, but yeah, you should be able, the riveting of these plates that are uh, were put uh, vertically, probably here, um, uh, uh, protecting the uh, uh, what is essentially mostly abdomen and part of the torso as well. So this, excuse me for the sound. So this area that appears obviously to be um, very important and um, probably very vulnerable to. Um, to uh, to hits during during combat and a vital area to protect and and very similar in construction to this uh, coat of plate uh, that seems actually to be um, here from the back I can't really see because um, from the back uh, here I I don't really know how it was uh, built but it seems in the back uh, this was exposed I mean it was um uh you can see this kind of um of ba of uh, um of bundle of um um i don't know you say that in english but you you can uh see even the knots and how it was closed it was something built uh, by opening and and closing it in, in the back and i don't know how mm <coughs> uh um, this I actually think that th the plate was arriving um, even uh, at your uh, protecting your uh, your backside, uh, not just the front. So it was like a full armor all around your abdomen, and in this sense, structurally speaking, it is extremely similar to uh, to the uh, probably most fa uh, famous um, Visby. Um, uh, Visby um <coughs> plate armor. Um, Visby is this um, um, uh, Swedish uh, town, I believe, in located in the uh, island of Gotland, where <coughs> a very terrible clash between the uh, Danes and the Swedes occurred in 1361. Um, and there were um, people, um <coughs> if I'm not wrong, um, buried uh, at the time. There is, there is a, a grave or uh, or mm, several mm, graves. I, I don't really know. I don't remember. 
but um, it, 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 um, uh, it this site contained a um, very well preserved um, coat of plate that was in this sense very similar in fashion to the um, to the one represented here in the Magdeburg Cathedral. I think that the Visby armor had um, an extra layer of it was uh, practically identical to this, if not for you know certain details with with this um, series of um, uh, la laminate mm, um, riveted uh, to this um, um, uh, I think ladder uh, um, support. Um, I'm I'm not really sure here because I don't know what it was probably uh, worn like that with organic material with onto which the lamella were placed because this is actually how the uh, the um, laminar or um, lamellar armor have was practically built. The, there was a sort of um, of ladder structure on which the um, the uh, plates of various um, dimension were uh, were tied on. Um, <coughs> that the Visby armor should have a um, um, a superior, um, uh, I mean a a, a series of um, plates even in the chest part. Um, so really not going around the torso like the the lower part. Also because there are the shoulders at that point, so you can't. You can't enclose them without mm, compromising um, arms mobility, but in this sense protecting also the upper part, so the, the full chest and the heart. Um, <coughs> and this is definitely pretty meaningful. So the Battle of Visby occurred in 1361, so pretty late, essentially one century afterwards when um, to, to, the, uh, to the Magdeburg or Constance Cathedral um, uh, cathedrals um, uh, sculptures when a plate armor was um, had been mm, was much developed by the time and very widespread on the battlefields um, so um, um, with Visby we are talking about, about a, an advanced f um, form of um, of a coat of plates that however is still strikingly similar to the one of one century before, so obviously the spread of coat of plates was very important, but the essentials of of how it was built were were still there in uh, in many ways. Actually, there was a lot of exp of experimentalism relatively to this. Uh, coat of plates were just like any armor; weren't all alike. They were built in many ways, al also with very different materials. They could be iron. Um, or, or still uh, naturally, but also of copper, of um, even of cuir um, bouillie, as the French would say. Uh, so the boiled leather, especially in those regions that um, had, uh, historically speaking, a scarcity of, of metals. This was typical of so of of um, of um, the Tusco Provencal uh, armor during the. Um, uh, especially the, the second half of the 13th and the beginning of the 14th century. Um, but in the second half of the 14th century, at the time of Visby, we have in in the uh, European knights' equipment essentially a very advanced plate armor um, um, evolution, let's say. Um, <coughs> and it was fastly um, developing towards the full uh, body uh, plate armor. Um, so with very um, um, with plate armor covering uh, almost the entire body, and uh, and this tells you, by the way, how mm, in in the 14th century um, uh, military engineering was speeding up mm, after centuries of relative, I can't say stagnation, but very slow. Mm, um, enhancement, very slow progress. I mean, between uh, a, a knight of the um, first half of the 13th century and a Carolingian knight, there weren't conceptually many differences. F it's from the 14th century that Europe um, 
for many reasons that we can explain today, essentially starts rising in terms of um, increasingly faster in terms of uh, military um, um, development of military technology and uh, so <coughs> in in uh, the time of this B, definitely the code of plate was still something pretty elitary to 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 have not all only a, a very few of the uh, a very few soldiers uh, could afford uh, a code of plate at least at th by that time and I think especially in, in countries like Scandinavia but um, they were a pretty mm, um, a pretty um, uh, common feature in all European armies at the time. I'm thinking, by the way, that um, I don't know if if the, if the corpses that were buried in this be uh, were evidently um, the spoil spoiled of their of their armor. I mean, in in the case of the uh, coat of plate that we found in there, it's obvious that that guy was buried with that on. But it's possible that there were also other coat of plates being worn by other other killed people that were buried and that ho however had been um, uh, taken off before uh, barring uh, the uh, the bodies but this is this is not really important um, <coughs> what is important really is to show this concept of how plate armor begins to, to spread uh, if you think about it even helmets are kind of plate armor and in this sense they 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 were there such <laughs> since a much longer time. Um, very few people make this point. So the fact that um, a plate armor starts to appear also for the uh, torso and other, and eventually for other um, um, for protecting other parts of the body, um, already should mm, mm, trigger in your mind that it, it wasn't that up to the mid of the 13th century there was a, actually a lack of technology uh, or that was the main reason for which coat of plate was not used at least extensively because I believe and there is evidence of coat of plates actually being used even previously um, in Byzantine sources for instance we know that for the I think the 12th century certain uh, Hungarian knights were um, were had horses with parts of plate armor. At least this is the term that I think Niketas um, Koniatas, this um, 12th, uh, 13th century Byzantine author says about the Hungarians. Um, plate armor was known in the East, even in the Byzantine Empire, in this sense. So um, um, this tells you that. Uh, in at least in my opinion, the reasons why uh, this armor starts appearing in Europe is really related to the um, to more probably economical reasons than 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 else than any than than other strictly military reasons. I mean, obviously, wearing a plate a coat of plate was triggered by certain factors that were occurring in terms of the spread of crossbow. Partly also of the um, of the rise of the infantry uh, in a certain measure, but this is mostly my opinion. It was chiefly the crossbow. I mean, this pro a projectile launcher that could really hit anyone, regardless of the uh, rank of the <laughs> of the social status, and that could really pierce through mail uh, very effectively. Um, not probably because um, crossbow technology was advancing at that time, because, but rather because the numbers of crossbowmen were increasing on the battlefield. But generally speaking, this came um, um, probably according, let's say, for, for many reasons that are really combined, so we can't really um, trace one general factor. I said that there was mostly an economical reason because um, um, indeed Europe was uh, rocketing econo economically speaking in the mid of the 13th century. Feudalism was at its uh, peak. Um, so the idea of um, imp improving your armor by adding extra metal, extra um, weight was something that the feudal elite by that time could really afford. Mm -hmm. 
So this went in parallel with other military reasons, as we have seen, but it, it was probably also related to the um, increase of material wealth of, of Western Europe that was really occurring pretty fast uh, at that time. So relatively to their geographical origins, because this is the, uh, the thing that I wanted to say, and to which I cannot um, objectively provide a very um, um, a definitive answer, because nobody actually knows that, so <laughs> definitely I uh, I'm no better than, than all the um, much more prepared scholars that studied uh, these, these topics. Um, but um, essentially uh, we know that the, the first, um, uh, the first uh, mentioned uh, coat of plates into Western Europe appear into certain uh, Italian documents that um, are respectively a, um, uh, um, I think, a war order uh, um, for uh, equipment uh, in Florence between the tw in, in 1259 and 1260, and a, um, a condotta, so a mercenary contract from um, Massa, which is a, a place um, uh, essentially in um, in Tuscany, northern Tuscany. Um, so uh, first of all, in Tuscany, Tuscany was seeing at and 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 most importantly, this um, um, uh, um, both of these uh, documents refer specifically to the armor of certain German. Uh, mercenaries that were at, uh, in the service of uh, of of the two uh, Tuscan cities. So this is why, uh, together with um, what we think are later sculptural evidences, uh, evidence like the one of Magdeburg and the Constance cathedrals that we we. Uh, attribute to Germany to have been the um, the birthplace of code of mail uh, into Western Europe, or at least the the place where it originated and, and eventually spread, uh, or at least where where it spread first than the other uh, than the other European uh, regions. Um, so. Um, um, this is interesting, I mean, because Germany and Italy were pretty much involved at the time, or better. This was a time of decline of the German intervention into Italy, because this is happening essentially um, in the um, um, at the moment of the uh, decline of the Owenstaufen and then eventually the rise of of the Angevins in 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 Italy. And in fact, another um, um, uh, um, account describing coat of plates is. Uh, is the one relatively to the um, to the new flan uh, uh, fangled plate armor worn by the German mercenaries at the Battle of uh, Benevento in 1266, um, the, um, which we think was to, to be coat of, um, to have been coat of of plates, mm -hmm. um, like the one depicted in. Um, in the uh, German uh, cathedrals. Um, this is very important because um, the Battle of Benevento of 1266 was essentially the clash that saw the uh, victory of Charles of Anjou on uh, Manfred, uh, the natural son of, Ho of Frederick II that had um, temporarily inherited the, um, the Kingdom of Sicily in the south. Um, of the peninsula, and um, this so usually Battle of Benevent is remembered essentially because it, it's it's probably the first um, explicit mention of this difference in equipment between the Germans and other European uh, knights like the French and the Italians. Uh, so much that uh, I think one of the sources, one of the chronicles that tells the battle says that the Angevin knights um, were 
um, uh, were not able essentially to, to, to trust to pierce against this uh, German um, armor uh, and that they had to um, go with, uh, uh, with stocks mm, essentially uh, trying to hit into um, at the neck and the and in, in in the armpits where um, this armor was um, was not present because at the joint that there wasn't a, a plate armor uh, yet um, and joints would remain historically speaking the the the, uh, the Achilles um, heel of 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 plate armor in general um this is very interesting because it seems uh, if i don't remember mm, badly that first of all the angevins were told during the battle at the stocks at, at the stocks something like that for for hitting and killing the german mercenaries then in this sense by the way were heavier uh he more heavily armored the coat of plates didn't come without uh costs because it, it kind of weightened the um, the cavalry it, it made it more cumbersome um, the the knights were less uh, agile so basically a cut of plate uh, increased obviously protection but uh, sacrificing uh, uh, in, ter in, in turn um, mobility also sensibly because cut of plates could add um, extra kilos definitely to 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 an armor that wasn't also that light. They were still pretty ergonomic. They um, they they obviously um, even in full plate armor. We know that uh, European knights in the, in the following centuries could uh, do acrobacies and and all. But um, it, it's not much of an individual uh, reason uh, of an individual fighting skill. But it's really the whole body of let's say of, of a cavalry formation that being heavier has it kind of slows down has an increasing attrition for physical reasons by being um, heavier think also about the horse that had to support more weight uh, in this sense I made a video that I think it's uh, you can check out I think it's interesting which is called waiting uh, of late 13th century armor the Ferrari's seal of the Guild of St. George where I discuss this uh, Ferrari's seal and that it's interesting because, by the way, it shows one of the early depictions of coat of mail, uh, a coat of plates that instead was in, in late uh, 13th century Italy on an Italian knight. So this tells you that as, as early as that, coat of plate was still present in Italy at, um, at a, um, you know, in, in, in a decent amount. And, and I discuss all the um, problems that derived both individually, uh, that derived from wearing coat of plates, both for the individual knight and the collective um, and uh, formation of of cavalry. Um, but what what I was saying is that the Germans were, in this sense, more cumbersome uh, at the Battle of, uh, of Benevento, or Benevento in Italian, um, while the the, fr the French Angevins. Uh, were really experimenting new forms of equipment. There was uh, that were usually uh, lighter. Uh, if you have certain um, iconic depictions of of Angevin knights um, of Provencal knights at this time, you have the you see that many of them are not wearing the full um, the full. Um, uh, uh, home, uh, the so-called the Great Helm, essentially. It was famous, especially in Germany at this time. But um, Kettle Helm Helmet was uh, also uh, s um, pretty widespread. Um, so in this sense, it seems that the Angevin Knights, compared to the Germans, were not just lighter, but also more agile and more, and even with their stocks already equipped in order to, to pierce at uh, and even to aggress very physically, we have pretty um, the, the enemy knights and trying to hit into the um, into the armpits and all. Surely, plate armor was was spreading at, at that time. We, have, we can think maybe just later compared to to Germany, but also in France at that time, by where there were there were coat of plates, let's say that were made up uh, in leather, for instance, in. As we were saying before, in both the latter and the Angevins and the and the um, 
central and southern Italians were that didn't have um, a great access to to metal at least um, uh, compared to the ones in the north or and other regions in Europe that uh, had more um, mineral resources um, were wearing um, leather coat of plates mm -hmm. um, that is actually pretty effective because people say oh well but it's leather you know yeah I know but if you're wearing um, a coat of mail and uh, with the gambeson beneath and all uh, underneath and, and and you put an extra um, boiled leather armor that is uh, sure it's leather but first of all it's boiled it's it's thickened it was thickened with um, certain um, um, means like resins or I don't remember even that it was all so it, w it was pretty pretty hard so essentially the, the, the blows that they were right straight at you could be um, fenced off by that or absorbed by that uh, secondly is sensibly cheaper than um, a metal coat of blade so it was actually pretty much in use into uh, and, and at this time was used for polanes for um, I, um for other um let's say um plate armor parts because plate armor in this sense didn't begin to spread uh, to spread just for the torso the torso was evidently one of the first um area areas that you you wanted to prioritize for in terms of protection but um if you see the Ferrari's seal of the Guild of St. George of the same age, you see that um, plate armor for uh, leg uh, defense was was pretty uh, was pretty advanced at the time, and especially think if you're a knight and you have to 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 charge into certain determined um, uh, Italian infantries equipped with pole arms, you know. You know, you you want your legs to be protected from from those weapons, so um, it's kind of people say, um, you know, that uh, plate ar um, plate armor began to uh, to develop essentially for this part of the body, um, and then later the others. Mm, it's kind of a mm, abstract um, order. We can't say that tendentially. Obviously, there was a. Um, as we were saying, also need to prioritize the protection of certain body areas, but mm, generally speaking, plate armor developed uh, for the whole body um, in in similar uh, in similar ways. Um, but in this sense, it, it's very meaningful that legs were increasingly protected um, by plate armor compared to, say, arms at the time, which really says, according to me, a lot about. Uh, late 13th century warfare in terms of development of infantry mm -hmm. and the fact that knights were uh, on, on horseback were increasingly uh, facing it. Um, yet uh, the um, um, and uh, what what is important relatively to the Angevin equipment compared to the German one which was a, a kind of a national thing I mean um, surely we don't have even here to um, to stress too much um, geographical um, differences in equipment because eventually the coat of plate spread all over Europe in in, in a few decades, uh, um, probably from Germany then to Italy roughly at the same time, and then eventually elsewhere. I, it's witnessed, um, but it, it's still important that the, the seemingly this triggered in turn um, a sort of uh, specialization even in dealing with um, a certain ki type of cavalry that was uh, he more heavily armored and another one that was conceived as more agile. Um, between the um, the end of the 13th century and especially the beginning of the 14th you see that cavalry first of all gets increasingly more professional but in turn increasingly more specialized. Um, the, um, the, the number of um, lighter uh, horsemen that uh, follow the, um, the heavily ar armored knight uh, is increasing and in this sense it's specializing. Uh, cavalry is getting something increasingly more professional, uh, increasingly more detached from the feudal the old feudal service and and um, and, and, and let's say um, payment in nature, in land, in in agricultural goods, and increasingly more um, 
depending on the market of warfare that is getting increasingly more monetized um, together with the economic rise of, uh, of, uh, of trade, of banks, of financing activities and, and so on. Um, so let's say that the, the rise of the code of plate um, really triggered in part certain um, developments in the um, um, in the um, in the European military that, that were really occurring already for other reasons, but that in this sense you can't really understand what which was the cause and which was the consequence. Mm -hmm. Just like um, you know, uh, did Cotta play uh, appear as uh, as a cause or a consequence of um, um, of uh, the spreading of crossbows on the battlefield. It doesn't really make sense because both things ha were happening at the same time. Um, but definitely a, a world continent whose military elites began in, in a very few decades to, to wear mm, parts of their armor in coat of plates when this was mm, practically um, unknown um, in, the, in the previous times really tells you that it wasn't like a fashion or a new technological invention. It was really something that was occurring for uh, certain socio-economical dynamics, mostly. Mm. And even the spread of the crossbow doesn't come um, wi by itself, because the crossbow um, was spreading chiefly among the commoners' armies, just to take the knights down, especially the horses, because the knight uh, at this time was, especially with the coat of blade, was relatively um, well mm, immune even to crossbow hits. Uh, but horses weren't, because most horses weren't covered in um, in armor. They mostly wore uh, things like the, the, the gamsons uh, um, for the knights, but a very few of them had coat of mail, and definitely coat of blade for horses um, was uh, pre present chiefly maybe for uh, head or chest defense, but uh, it before h getting to full plate armor for horses, we have to wait really a long time, and, and that always remained a very narrow um, numerical, social, and military uh, elite that, that could afford such a uh, protection for the animal. Um, so, um, this is important because um, and it, I think that the, the rise of code of plates was also triggered by the uh, the rise of commoners' armies that were challenging always increasingly the um, the knightly elite, and that would mm, in fact inflict very heavy defeats to feudal cavalry uh, in the first half of the 14th century. And then there are all reasons for which that progressively stops and starts uh, happening once again only from the, the, the first half of the, of the 15th century instead, but we're not gonna discuss that, uh, at least now. Um, so, um, uh, going back to uh, Germany and the idea of why did, let, because this was really the, the answer of um, really, w this was really the question that we posed. Why do this um, coat of plates seem to have um, spread uh, firstly in Germany? Because we have actually lots of evidence of coat of plates, uh, a lot of representations coming from Germany, and chiefly, chiefly from its um, eastern borders, so often along the Elbe, where Magdeburg is located, for instance. So a lot of people have started questioning, you know, why Germany and especially why the eastern frontier? Because even if we take into consideration the economical reason, um, I mean, the Rhine Valley in the west or even uh, southern Germany were usually wealthier than the, uh, the eastern um, regions of, 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 the, uh, of Germany. So, um, the first of all, w what is very interesting is that this starts appearing in Germany and we don't have evidence of this um, coat of plates existing, say, in the, uh, in the Slavic countries uh, with which the Germans bordered, like the Bohemians or the Poles. Mm. 
So the idea is, first of all, in, in here, according to me, that this was originated in in f in full feudal Europe because by the end of the 13th century Germany was um, practically completely feudalized, like like France. Um, and by the way, the German knights at this time start even to be mm, stereotypically represented as the best knights around, while uh, usually uh, up to that point it had been the French, although um, there was still discussion relatively to this. I personally found certain German sources that were claiming even in the um, in the first half of the 14th century that still the best uh, cavalry was was the French one and and, and w he was actually enemy of the French so actually the best cavalry in Europe remained al always the French one um, but let's say that the, the what I wanted to m to say relatively to the rise of uh, to the spread of coat of plates is that uh, uh, this was occurring into an area that was um, developing the fe feudal elite so the economical reason is kind of there you know um, but uh, as we were saying always uh, on um, on the base of the uh, of the economical criterion um, there were wealthier areas of Germany so people have thought that maybe what um, the the um, eastern frontier warfare uh, had certain um, features that uh, triggered the rise of of coat of plates from the German side. Um, the um, it's there have been s certain hypotheses, chiefly the fact that the um, uh, the the this type of armor was brought in there by the Mongols, but uh, relatively to this, I don't want to say because usually the Mongols didn't use coat of plates. Um, usually, uh, at least at this time, um, eventually, I mean the, the Mongols were dwelling into certain Eurasian territories where coat of plates were existing since a very long time. Think about the peoples of the steppes with which the Mongols were heavily blended. Um, historically speaking, that made extensive use of plate armor. So, But there is no direct evidence that Mongols actually brought heavy ar m plate armor into Europe and it still doesn't explain why, why the Germans would have taken that. It's, it's kind of a technological hypothesis. Um, it's as if, uh, you know, someone had to teach the Germans that that a, a plate, um, 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 a metal plate was good at, at, at uh, fencing off uh, an enemy blows. I mean, that is something self-evident for, for any time, <laughs> for any, uh, in any times in history. So I, I really don't think that this was the reason. Although, uh, I think one reason that is could really actually be the cause that is always uh, connected to the Mongols is that the Mongols made extensive use of archery. Uh, especially, the, mm, as we know, the, the Mongol composite bow was a pretty mm, amazing uh, weapon uh, with a very uh, long range and a greater power than the Western, um, the Western bow. Um, and we know that the Germans, uh, like uh, Leinitz, together with the Poles, suffered devastating defeats uh, at the hands of the uh, the Mongol uh, armies. Uh, the Mongols really arrived at the gates of Germany at this point, and and also in Hungary. So, really pretty close to uh, Eastern Germany and and places that the Eastern Ger Germans interacted with politically and mil militarily since centuries. So. Um, in this sense, it could be possible that the Germans began to develop the heavier armors for meeting up the uh, the French, uh, not the French, <laughs> the Mongol um, um, archer fire, um, which kind of makes sense. But the 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 idea is, you know, why not? Because of stopping the the commoners. Uh, crossbow bolts that were thrown at them already <laughs> into Germany. I mean, we can't really mm, make an hypothesis without um, knowing how, uh, uh, having a direct evidence relatively to this. 
Surely Mongol warfare was devastating and surely that frightened the, the Westerners and it is possible that some of them decided to develop um, codes uh, of blades in order to stop their arrows. But uh, um, uh, it, it's kind of a mechanicistic answer. Mm, to me it's uh, really based on the availability of, of wealth, of resources. Um, the rise even in local warfare of, of the crossbow. Mm -hmm. um, it is indeed true that mm, even before the Mongols and aside from the Mongols that the Eastern European populations that the Germans had met usually in their Eastern frontier, their Eastern borders, were a bit more, um, um, you know, they, they made it a, a greater use of of projectiles than uh, than Western cavalry, especially at this point, in the sense even uh, this is not usually a a bright answer, but uh, also because certain parts, especially Western Poland and Bohemia at this time, were pretty uh, heavily um, um, Germanized in fashion. I mean the uh, traditional, let's say, Polish cavalry with throwing darts and javelins and all had transformed into essentially a, a Western heavy cavalry. It is indeed true that the Germans at this time were uh, pretty much intensely involved into the Baltic Crusades. And the Baltic Crusades were waged against peoples like the Lithuanians and other and at this time, definitely, it, 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 there was a, a very heavy Mongol influence, even in Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia at this time is pretty heavily Mongolized, even in terms of um, military equipment. Uh, much of the Russian principalities uh, who hadn't been destroyed had become vassals of the Khans, um, of, uh, of the Golden Horde, or what would have become the Golden Horde. So the... Mm, the idea is probably, um, aside from the, mm, the the major Mongol waves, um, considering Eastern European warfare as a whole, um, uh, th there was a greater use of javelins and of arrows uh, in those areas um, for which the Germans had to worry when they advanced in countries like the Baltic and all. Um, this was done also for another reason uh, that um, that is something that you can find even um, similarly in other areas of uh, the, Euro the Christian European frontier. That is chiefly the fact that um, the populations that the, the feudal uh, Europeans were invading um, weren't uh, couldn't really field um, equally heavy uh, troops like uh, the the European uh, the, the Western heavy cavalry, so a very good thing to do was to harass them into guerrilla warfare, into s uh, skirmishes and all, where projectile wav weapons were definitely pretty useful. Um, this is something you find in Wales, for instance, against the Eng English knights. This is something you find into. Um, into uh, even medieval Iberia, into which the Hinetes were this kind of sh skirmish cavalry that remains some somewhat characteristics, even partly of the, of the Christian Iberian armies there. Uh, in the 13th century, the, the Westerners were still present in the Near East, uh, fighting against the Eastern populations in there that made a prominent use of horse archery and all. Um, so it probably was a, um, a sum of factors that, uh, in the case of Germany, I don't really know about the availability of metals in Germany, because Germany at that time was compared especially to, to Southern U and Western Europe um, poorer generally speaking. So Germany usually has good mineral uh, resources, but one thing is to have mineral resources and one thing is to have other resources to actually uh, extract those metals. And relatively to this, uh, it's it's very important to see that once that um, this plate armor uh, arrived into Italy, that as we've seen happened um, uh, immediately both because there were um, uh, German knights in there, but also because mm, Italy and Germany are pretty close, um, it was actually the Italians that began to produce en masse, especially in because of the uh, Lombard, uh, chiefly Milanese and Brescian 
um, um, armories, uh, I, not armories, how you call them, I mean smiths, especially at the time pre-Black Death production was still based chiefly on local artisans, not really sort of pre-industrial mm, ways of production, but um, um, were actually the, uh, the best organized um, um, armor uh, and weapons and armor producers all over Europe, like uh, Italy remained at the um, at the, um, you know uh, at the top of uh, armor produ and, and and weaponry production uh, from, si from since this time to um, to very advanced even into the modern um, into the modern age. Uh, so uh, actually, lots of, of plate armor is um, is beginning to be witnessed into Italy and to export it from Italy into into Germany into our. It's not that uh, local. Um, German or French smiths didn't produce coats, uh, coats of plates, but simply the Italians mm, made them better and on a sort of a um, pre-industrial scale and organization that was based chiefly for on economical reasons of uh, production, organization, and property distribution and all. Um, so really the coat of plate at, at this in a very few time becomes uh, universal into Europe and uh, it, it never it never went back until essentially the development of firearms during the um, actually firearms are being developed since the, this time but I mean the perfectionment of firearms uh, into essentially the 16th century when armor begins to be too costly for stopping Arcus shots um, and in this sense, it was better to invest in archibuses and not in armor to to have effective armies and to reduce casualties. Um, so this is really how it went, in my opinion, and there can't be um, a greater reason. The, 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 there is an hypothesis being done also because there is a um, there is actually an extra um, point to the uh, German frontier warfare um, uh, hypothesis in the sense that uh, uh, from th the 12th century um, um, there is evidence that in to Poland of the use of, s of the so-called um, um, Polish belt that was in use um, definitely as probably still at this time there was a sort of um, it wasn't actually a metal armor but it was still conceived as sort of plate uh, leather armor that uh, protected the waist uh, the the abdomen of the uh, of the Polish knights and, w and w which was worn over the coat of plate and th that therefore added extra protection and and this so-called Polish belt then in this sense it, it, it is so similar to the um, to the um, coat of plates depicted on the uh, Magdeburg and Constance cathedrals in in in, in appearance in in structure what changes is essentially just the um, uh, the the material that passes from leather to metal has led certain uh, scholars to say oh, this is probably also uh, what the, the the Germans took the idea from look at these poles wearing these leather bands around their abdomen and of hardened leather of other organic material um, with certain um, uh, secured by buckles uh, and all, uh, the, the Polish belt was, I, I think, actually uh, the evidence is that it was secured in the front of the uh, of the torso, not in the back, like uh, here in the picture. But it's essentially the same thing from a con conceptual point of view. Um, so people have said, oh yeah, yeah, the Germans copied that from the Eastern frontier because yeah, the Mongols perhaps uh, influenced uh, this uh, need and all. Uh, the need of protection from on in the Western Knights, the the Poles already use this kind of. W it, it's possible, actually. I I'm not saying this is b in order to explain why this originated in Germany. Objectively, there seem to have been certain um, characteristics of um, the um, German Eastern Frontier warfare that might have 
triggered the um the burn the spread of code of plates in eastern Germany before then in other areas of 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 Europe but at the same time it remains an hypothesis i mean we we really don't know and um mm, we we can't really say mm, i think much more than this and in my opinion um especially this is not a um it, it didn't remain a local characteristics i mean in the rest of um of um western warfare you see that uh, germany doesn't remain essentially nor one of the most advanced countries in terms of armor production for basically all the, the middle ages until the the augsburg um um uh, Smith's corporations in the especially in the, at the end of the fifteenth and beginning of the sixteenth century rise to a certain prominence into metal uh i mean into armor production um together with other centers in europe and and still th there is no further evidence for um, for an increased need of protection in Germany or in eastern Germany into the uh eastern frontier than than in other areas of Europe for the on the base on how the uh, code of plate actually developed. Um, so on the contrary, I think Italy remained uh, the uh, the most advanced country in terms of um, uh, military technology and armor production. Um, and uh, it is true that Italy in this sense might have had an increased need for protection because uh, Italy had very extensive armies of commoners uh, that made a use of crossbows en masse and ha and were pretty advanced also in into the um, development of the uh, fi first firearm um, technologies. Um, so um, um, uh, there was also a lot of warfare going on into Italy this time, so really a, a meat grinder into which also uh, thanks to the, the availability of resources of wealth to invest into um, to armament and the very intense warfare that was occurring it, it's pretty normal that it was ahead to mm, compared to other European countries in this sense um, but there is really no other evidence to 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 really uh, find to to enucleate with certainty the causes of the spread of, of metal of coat of plates uh, into into Germany first then in other um, in other uh, lands of Europe so I don't know what you think about it because I know that th there are lots of people who are very opinionated <laughs> about this topic historically speaking um, for what I know uh, scholars admittedly uh, cannot find an answer so me neither <laughs> Um, as it would seem uh, obvious <laughs> compared to their expertise so um, however it's important to me that um, there is such discussion relatively to to these topics and remember that that explanations are pretty much more structural than than anything uh, um, so um, it doesn't have necessarily to be a mechanicistic m m reason in terms of military environment but it can be also uh, more probably related to certain um, uh, production uh, dynamics of wealth of, of resources availability and stuff like that as we have said so I think this is all I wanted to say um, I wanted actually to say that even German equipment this time uh, knows definitely the lightning that you can see into the Angevin warfare with cattle helmets and all so I didn't want to make a sharp division between the um, Tasco Provencal um, equipment and the the German one um, at this time uh, in terms of military equipment knights are very um, are really they, they, they have a lot of customization uh, there was no standard uh, equipment that everybody had to wear basically every night m bought uh, his equipment on, on his own or at least he was provided with uh, pieces that were definitely inter uh, interchangeable and um, and um, uh, there was uh, a pretty mm, 
and and it was at this time as we also said a greater um option of of weapon rate and an armor that was uh, starting to develop compared to previous times so if you see uh, I think this is uh, the moment in let's say the, the second half of the 13th and the first half of the 14th century in which you have the the most beautiful um, at least in aesthetical terms so it's a, a really subjective thing the most beautiful knights in history uh, I don't like the full plate armor of the 15th century <laughs> or the 16th century I mean I like it uh, but I think that the the most fascinating um European knights are really the ones from from this um uh, phase between the thirteenth and fourteenth century but <laughs> maybe you 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 don't really need a disinformation about my taste is um I just hope that you liked this video and if you did please share it otherwise leave a like or subscribe to my channel if you're interested to receive um uh further news about my uh, my videos and for now I thank you heartily um, as always for listening to me I wish you a nice time and see you next time bye